So when I went to get married, I might go, well, do you have any marriage? Do you have any skills? Can you, can you cook? Can you sew? Can, can you play the piano? Because I need to be entertained. Uh, right? Because, you know, there, there's no CDs. There's no MP3s. There's no AAC. There's no Apple. <laughs> you know, there's barely electricity. I don't know what the people did with their days. Right? So we've shifted from a production complementarity to what we call a consumption complementarity, which basically means do we like to consume the same things? So now to go back with dating, I need to find someone who fits me. What are the questions that we often ask people when we go when we're when we are seeing if they're the one for us? What do you like to do? What do, you like to do? do we like to do the same things? You know, oh, you don't like to hike and go to concerts? Well, it's great knowing you. See you later. Yeah, see you later. Uh, or you no longer like to do the things we once did. You're no fun anymore. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, going to go off and see whatever's out there, right? <laughs> so, one shit's going to happen. So when we talk about your value or your worth in the dating scene, we got to go, hmm, can we think of males and females and go, can we figure out what their worths are going to be in these models? Because if I'm in a production complementarity model, how is my worth going to be determined? Attractive as money and skills. No, in a, in a productiveness complementarity. Oh, oh. So in production, I'm going to want to know what homemaking skills you have, yeah. right? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Makes per I mean, I, there's no Walmart. I can't go buy socks, and so when the socks get holes in them, I socks are want to do. Can you darn them? I bet solid cash that only one person in this room knows how to sew a sock. It's not me. Like sew a hole in the sock? Well, sew a sock. Well, not sew a hole in it, but fix the hole that is in the sock. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm going to sew a hole in that sock. <laughs> that was sort of defeating. <laughs> yeah, fix the hole. Yeah. I know it. It's not hard, and people have tried to teach me. No, I don't know. Oh, I mean, no. But right, that's not a skill. That's not a skill that we that we, in the broad sense, promote anymore, right? Yeah, so we think you just go buy a new one, go up to Fort Payne, sock capital of the world. Yeah. Yeah, Fort Payne is the sock capital of the world. Fort Payne, Alabama. That is good It's also the home of the band Alabama. I mean. You, 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 <laughs> These and other random facts. <laughs> All right. What is the purpose of dating? So it's to find a mate, but we got to think if the purpose of if the purpose of dating is to help us find a mate, if the purpose of marriage has changed, obviously the purpose of dating is going to change. And you can see you can see this like it's almost like, and this is what this is why I'm going to do this. You're going to be able to start predicting the direction things are going to go. And this is going to be awesome. And finally. What could a male expect for his money? <laughs> we don't like to think of it this way. We we don't because we have shifted our notions as well. But but we we have to do some work. All right, so let's get going here. The value of a date. Well, there became this odd thought here that a date came to mean an activity that cost money. And almost universally cost his money. The woman didn't make as much. All right, so then became this question of, well, who am I going to spend my money on? And I want to spend my money on the person who is most worthy. Because we started developing this capitalistic view of dating, right? I need to get, in, I need to get uh, from my dating experience something commensurate to what it cost me. All right, so I want to pick the best woman. What am I looking for? Not just me, but in the broader cultural view, this broader cultural view starts promoting different ideas of what marriage is. So let's go back. And you, you can do this in history text. You can go back 150 years. And you, can, and you can read and you go, how important did they think sex was in a marriage? Yeah, very, very, certainly less important. Many people enjoyed it. 
Not as many people enjoyed it, but they thought, you know, it's mainly for kids. Well, let's see. The number of kids has been dropping, right? So, you know, families used to be eight kids, six kids. Now we're down to an average of two and change. Yeah. You know, 2.3 kids, so there's my little short kid, right? <laughs> right? Just over two kids. So people are like, well, I'm not going to stay in an entire relationship to have sex three times to have my three kids. Uh, so sex has started to assume a greater importance. And start seeing how that has trickled down into dating. Your great-grandparents, when they dated, probably they may have necked. They may have kissed someone and whoo -hoo. <laughs> but then what happens with your grandparents as sex starts assuming more importance in the marriage, we start developing this idea of, I need to make sure we're going to work, sex right? Mm -hmm. We're compatible. I need, yeah, I need to see if we're compatible. But prior generations didn't have that idea. They assumed you would make yourself compatible, which is kind of what we are arguing previous. Uh, because over that time, maybe they, had, they thought that... Uh, Marriage, they found the date just who can take care of their coming generation. Yeah. That was more important nowadays. It's more selfish that they can, you know, satisfy me or we well, can selfish isn't a valuative term, but it's certainly much more about my personal happiness. And then comes the kids or, you know, the next generation. Yeah, and we see that's what's happening now. And people get divorced and they do that. Yeah, no, you're, so you're, yeah. you're on the right track. You're going, okay, but if I see marriage is more about I'm looking for someone for me. Oh, and you used to be that one for me, but now you don't like to do the things we used to do. You don't hike anymore. You don't camp anymore. You don't like to go to concerts anymore. You know what? She does. I'm going to go there. Yeah, I'm going to go there. <laughs> right, I mean, we don't, we don't want to think of it that way, but if I'm trying to predict and explain your behavior, I have to know this is what's going on in the broader culture. Um, Bailey, again, argues that there is going to be an economic sense here. Bailey's going to argue that the man... Sorry, the woman that a man escorted, just as the car he drove, publicly defined his taste and his means. So, so, so there's going to be this encouragement of thinking of dating in an economic sense. Oh, this is, if y'all are offended so far, I am not even there yet. There's an economic term that I'm going to introduce that's going to help us out here. Uh, I, I mean... It's actually they're going to help you out a lot. It's actually going to be really cool. And if you get it, you're going to go, oh my God, that is oh, that is oh, oh. That's oh. Cool. Then, then you know you are going to start. You're going to get a fire pit and some cigars and a cat and sit there and go, is that the right way to think about this? This is really, this is depressing in a thousand ways. Uh, because it will. You'll start going, oh, we do it that way. Oh, 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 and so. <laughs> no, you will. You might, you know, you might develop a drinking problem. Who knows where this is going to take you, right? So the, our first thing here is to look at it as many people have looked at dating as a supply and demand, just focusing on sex. So one view is looking at uh, dating and glossing it as access to sex, sex, which means access to females, and females being the supply of the sex for the male. That's one perspective that anthropologists have taken. That's not even the most offensive one. <laughs> so, but I'm going to give you this one here in a second. Um, another way to think about dating is to think of it the dating as a market. What do you think? As a market, and there's an economic term called monopolistic competition. If you take any economics course, they'll teach you about monopolistic competition. And all this means is many firms, females, males, so this is sort of the, this, this, this will either illuminate the world for you or make you hate society at some point. Or some, or, or some combination, right? So in monopolistic competition, many firms, and so for us, firms are going to be females and males, sell similar, and even if you thought of it as similar being sex, but you could think access to female or access to male, sell similar but not identical products. So all females sell a similar feminine form, and all males sell a similar masculine form, but they're not identical. Here's the cool part. Y'all either love me or hate me. I don't know how this is going to come across. 
Does anyone take economics yet? What, hap what happens in monopolistic competition? There's one almost key feature that's going to come out of monopolistic competition. It's really cool. Advertising. Advertising is huge in monopolistic competition. Like think of it, Coke versus Pepsi. Those advertise all the time. They're very similar products. No offense to Coke and Pepsi. Uh, they're very similar. You know, they're mostly you know fuzzy water that's colored. Fuzzy colored water that sometimes has sugar, sometimes aspartame. Sometimes that weird stuff that Pepsi uses. I can't quite figure it out. What's like, What? No, I don't. Like Diet Pepsi uses some sort of weird sugar that I don't, or sugar thing that I don't know what it is. Splenda. It's not aspartame. <laughs> Splenda. Yeah, it's something that makes me want to go. Anyway. <laughs> what? Stevia. That may be it. But, I don't, but Pepsi has like eight diet versions, right? They have Diet Pepsi, Pepsi Zero. One, Pepsi Zero, oh. Pepsi Half. You know. <laughs> they have one that's like half calories. Like the regular Pepsi. Anyway, that's irrelevant. <laughs> How might this analysis help us, and think about previous lectures, how might this analysis, if we view the dating market as a monopolistic competition where people are going to advertise their product, them, what, how might this help us understand what's going on? Because you gave money earlier, right? And that's, that's not bad, but money is one way that I, as a male, can compete, right? I can try and compete by going, look, I have lots of money, you want to mate with me. <laughs> Which I would never say to anyone, because it's a lie. Uh, <laughs> all right, what else? What's another way that I, as a male, and that we observe males compete? Physically. Yeah, physical, right? Uh, <laughs> not my spelling. Uh, right? I can say, look at this. I am a Greek god, people. <laughs> I would say money before I said that. Uh, <laughs> right? I am a Greek god. All right? That's so, what we're, so think about what's happened, though, to the emphasis on the male physique as we start the shifting in terms of dating, that this has that we can, we can trace this increase in emphasis and importance of male physique as one of the things that males are offering in this dating market. What else could I offer? Wit? Charm? Personality? No? <laughs> That's depressing. You're like, oh. <laughs> I can't personally offer them or they're not good to offer. <laughs> No, no, no. It, but you can look at this and go, the things that, that's, so this is one way to think of it. Do the sexes advertise differently? So they're going to advertise, there's going to be some similarities, but are there differences in how the sexes advertise themselves in this dating market? Yes. And this gives rise to one way to approach this analysis. Now, this person, did, these authors did not conceive of this in exactly the same way, but their analysis works. They looked at, uh, they're focusing on females, very few people have focused on males, and they've said, okay, if we look at dating as a market, so if we think of it as monopolistic competition where everyone's going to emphasize their best traits, there, there are traits that are going to make you, your product more expensive and less expensive. And they said, well, what are things that seem to, in our culture, make females, oh, this is bad, no, we're going to get some flat, but that make female sexuality less expensive? Age. That's one of the first ones. Right? Like, all right. But we can all, so this is what could be really cool. You can sort of go down the list, you know, attract, you know if you're not attractive, that's, you know, if you're attractive, it's going to raise your value. So it basically says our society puts a value on attractiveness, right? So here's what's going to be really, really cool. Knowing this, what do I as a female do to advertise my product? I'm going to make myself look more attractive in ways that our culture is looking for. This fits in the previous stuff. One of the things that we basically say to say I'm attractive is I'm hebic. 
right? I'm going to emphasize my hebicness because being hebic is a high value. I love this. So, so we can look at things that they say lower, older. Um, uh, so, if the, so if there's other women who want the man, it's like, well, I don't have to necessarily go with you. Uh, this is one that I've always found really weird. Sex drives, high, that's one that I find peculiar, uh, but it does show up again and again. Um, and the only gloss I could get, the only reason I could think this might work here is that this gets linked to having many partners, this one here. I think these two too often get linked. But if you think about it, this is an interesting sex difference because I'm wondering if this is going to shift when females get more equality. If they're going to start going, okay, we either get to have as much pleasure as you do or you have to get less. I'm wondering how that's going to go, right? Our females, so, we, so let's end this with a prediction. In 50 years, when I'm probably dead, the way I'm living, <laughs> I'm about to be 40. I'm going to be 89 years old. You know, I mean, obviously, y'all don't think I'm a green god now, right? Yes, I heard that cyborgs are going to exist before Which way do you think? Which way do you think this is going to go? So I get in. Do you think that females are going to move in the direction of saying, we want to be able to use our sexuality and have as much fun as males have been having without the social reprocant, or push males and go, we care that you've had as, we care that you've been that experienced? A, females are going to try to become more like males were, or B, females are going to force males to be more like they were controlled. Three. All right, y'all have a, a very strong prediction. And y'all's prediction is that y'all think emails are already happening. It's already happening. I will see y'all Friday. <laughs>